guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. Did a, a video on this a while ago about substituting colors for shadows. Instead of using shadows or grays and blacks, I use colors as my shadows and highlights. But what I have here are my Prisma colors, and this effect usually works best on tone tan paper. You can do this technique on white paper as well, it's just it really pops on tone tan paper. I got this from Hobby Lobby for $7 and you can find it anywhere else, but this is Strathmore Tan Tone Paper. For instance, what I like to do is I like to use complementary colors or colors that don't really belong there. If I were to look at Pascal, I'd see a bunch of greens and then a yellow and a little bit of white. So that's what I would see if I were looking at a picture of Pascal. Instead of using shadows or blacks and grays, but what I like to do is just mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna start off with this lavender, which is a PC934, and these are Prismacolor pencils. And I'm gonna go ahead and go where I know I want my shadows. And when I'm coloring with my colored pencils, I go in a circular motion. So even though you probably see this going up and down, I'm actually going in a circle. So you can see it makes this little bit of an oval shape. I always find that this is the best way to color with a colored pencil just because instead of going like this in different directions and pressing down really hard, that's not going to get a really awesome effect. Now, even though I put in the shadows of purple and green and purple are not complementary colors, that's when I'm gonna, I'm going to go in with my blue and I'm gonna go ahead and almost mirror everything I just did. If I go right here, underneath his mouth, I, I leave a little space for the purple to still show. So I'm gonna lightly go ahead and color this in. And I'm just laying out my shadows right now in an overall first layer. And I forgot to mention that the blue I just used was a PC903. Now, after I use my blue, I'm gonna go ahead and start using my actual green into the blue and where I need to highlight. Now what I'd like to go ahead and start focusing on is more of my white highlight. So I'm going to take my white pencil and that was a green PC909 and I'm going to start going ahead and putting in where I want my highlights and I'm going to start smoothing out my first layers because to get the overall effect to make it look smooth and pop a little bit more off the paper even though it's beginning to pop just a little is to go ahead and take my white pencil to blend everything in. It will dull the colors but it will also brighten them if I keep, if I go ahead and get this white pencil all over what I just created, then I can go back and create a second layer with the exact same colors in the order and it'll pop a little bit more. I forgot that I need at least a highlighter co a color in here along with my dark green. So I started using my chartreuse which is PC989 and I started to go in and fill in just that overall because Pascal does have a lime green color, a lime green color to his face and his skin. What I'd like to do is go ahead and go over the layers once again using the same colors over and over. So that means I'm going to do my purple again and my blue and then my green and it will start to pop more and more. I'm gonna go over all of my layers once again using the exact same colors and you will start to notice that the colors will start to pop. Okay, what I'd like to do now is go ahead and jump into a full time lapse so I can talk you through what exactly I'm doing here. Now, 
I'm not kidding. When it comes to blending and really popping colored pencil drawings, for example, Pascal right now, on this tone tan paper, or just in general white paper, this will work on both tone tan and white paper, this sh shading technique it is all based on layers. I know a lot of people have recommended the blending pencils that come, it's a stock blending pencil you can get it at Michaels with whatever colored pencils that you use. Personally, I do not like to use blending pencils. That's why you always see me using my white pencils because I genuinely do believe that the white pencils do help the layers to really pop. Now, when I refer to layers, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do at least five of these layers. I at least have three good layers right here. And what I do if I don't feel that my colors are blending in with each other, then I just, I just put that color over the other color. It's almost the same as Copic markers when you want to do layers over layers and you want to blend them, but you use a lighter shade. In this case, I'm using the same shade to blend my colors in just a little bit more so I don't have, it's, it's more of a smooth technique than lines. I want to, for example, if you're looking at his paws or just my purples, if I really want it to blend in with each other, I'll just use the same color. If I want my purple to blend in with my blue, I'm gonna take my purple, go more into my blue. Or if I want my blue to blend more with my green, I'm gonna take my blue and go over my green. And if I don't, it's not complete layers, I just keep go over, going over the same spot over and over until I'm okay with what I have. And I'm more, I, I think, oh, this is smooth enough, okay, I don't see lines, okay, this is good, I'm happy with this. And I just keep going over and over. It's not necessarily covering the character with eight different layers, it's just layering those shadows and just kind of pinpointing it and making sure that your layers are going in smoothly. When it comes to these drawings on tone tan paper, my main objective is to make colors pop and to somehow just experiment with different colors. And it's also a huge goal for me to make my colors look as smooth as possible. So I'm not trying to make them into sections. I want my colors to blend almost like a perfect gradient. Even though they are not a perfect gradient of colors, and they don't complement each other, I just want them to look smooth. That is the overall goal when it comes to colored pencils. And those are the main points I wanted to say is I do not use any other fashion of coloring other than the circle motion, whether it's that long oval, I find that using that circle motion when it comes to coloring is a huge factor when it comes to making these very, very beautiful and very smooth. I see so many colored pencil drawings where I see the artist just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and they press down so hardly and they're not getting the effect that they want and they always ask me, how do I get to the effect that you're on? And I say, well, why don't you try to color in a circular motion and really focus on your layers? But also, as soon as I'm done and I'm happy about my layers, this is when I come in and I go ahead and I outline my whole character once again, just because the colored pencils do go over your lining. And then I use my white gel pen, which is a Jelly Roll white gel pen. You can get it at any art store or on Amazon. But yes, I really hope this was helpful. And since we're revisiting this project again about using colors for shadows instead of using shadows for colors, then I really hope that this helped. And I really, really hope that you give this a try, whether it's on tone tan paper or white paper. I hope you guys have a most wonderful day and I will see you all later. 